Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. It's me, Only Run Very Noob, and today I'm bringing you something a little special, a little different. As we all know, Heavy Hitters is on the horizon, and we are getting two new Guardians. Um, I've shown you Betsy before. I think Betsy should be a little interesting. Um, personally, I'm not super excited about Betsy, although she does seem fun, and a new Guardian is exciting, but the second Guardian is Victor Goldmane, High and Mighty. Now, I am very excited about this hero. I think this hero is going to be very, very good. I feel like this hero, this Guardian hero text is sort of the best we've um, seen since Starvo, and if you just cross Starvo, if you just like get him out of the history books, I think it's the best we've ever seen. Um, drawing cards is very good in this game. It's something that's incredibly difficult to do efficiently. When you look at stuff like Toma Fiendel, um, it costs one, you draw two, and it doesn't have go again, so you kind of got to jump through that hoop. Or you look at something like Cashin, where it does have go again to draw two, but you also have to jump through sort of a hoop. You have to sacrifice a gold, which maybe in Victor isn't that hard, but normally means you have to like not even wear a normal helmet. You have to wear a helmet that basically just says you get to start with a gold. And while those cards do say draw two and Victor just says draw one, um, when all a card does is draw two cards, it's essentially you're only going up one card, right? Because you had to use a card to draw two, so you net one. Where creating a gold token with Victor is just going to net one on its own. Now, of course, you're probably going to use a card to create a gold or use some sort of effect to create a gold. But hopefully it's doing more than just creating a gold. So you're getting like the value of a card plus drawing a card. And um, we haven't even seen the whole set. And even what we have with what we have so far, I think um, he's just going to be generating a lot of value. The second part of his hero ability says the first time you would fail to win a clash. Instead, you may destroy a gold you control. If you do, um, put one of the revealed cards on the bottom of its owner's deck. That means you can choose their card they reveal or your card you reveal. And then you get to clash again. Um, I think this will come up, but it is certainly... Like, the power, like, 90% of the power of his card is on his first line of text, maybe even more than 90%. Um, and the second line of text is just sort of, I don't know, it's, it's, honestly, I think it's more flavor than, like, mechanically strong. Like, it's really cool that Victor can just, like, lose a fight, but not really lose a fight because he's rich, and he gets to just pay a gold to try again. So I think that's like a really big flavor hit. And I think it should come up sometimes, perhaps in certain builds. But um, we'll talk about the deck I'm going to be playing t later on today. The equipment that I have in the main deck, um, you probably recognize it by now. We have Anothos, Civic Steps, Crater Fist, Crown of Providence, and Tectonic Plating. Tectonic Plating could be Tunic. I'm just trying Tectonic Plating because in these new Guardians I've found... Tunic is a little awkward with Anothos because you, if you have two blues in your hand, you can't make it six um, because their hero pal ability for Betsy and Victor both don't let you like filter the blue, where with Bravo, you can always just like activate Bravo with the blue and then pitch into the hammer. But um, Tunic will probably be good for reasons we're about to see. We have Red Choke Slam and Red Debilitate, of course, very good off Tunic. And um, that's mainly the main reason I'd want I'd consider Tunic is because there's so many four drops. There's also a specialization down here that I'll talk about when I get there. But Chokeslam and Debilitate are also good off of a Surge, and I'm testing them right now. Um, they're just solid cards. I have Command and Conquer. It's a good card. One card you'll see is missing from this list is Pummel. Um, that could be wrong, but it's a card that doesn't win clashes. It's not really fatigue style. I guess I should go into that a little first. With Victor, I'm definitely just trying to get a lot of value and sort of um, fatigue my, my opponent through damage and through longevity. That's why you see something like Sigil over Pummel. 
Um, we play a Fate for Scene and Sink Below. Very good cards. Just very, very, very good cards. Um, when starting to build a deck, uh, a Guardian deck, I will probably include these six until further notice. They're just, um, like I said, very good cards. I mean, one card for four value is just uh, strong. And when it's a defensive card that you're getting for defensive value, it can be even stronger because you're breaking a lot of, the, or you're stopping a lot of the break points that your aggressive decks will be trying to throw at you. I'm running Sigil because I'm a little um, trying to be a little fatiguey. Uh, I think it's pretty good for longevity, and uh, I think it's slightly better than Pummel, even though we have some pretty good Pummel targets with Choke Slam, Command and Conquer, and Debilitate. Of course we run Spinal Crush. It's basically like the only disruptive attack in the deck. Um, we don't get access to things like Crippling Crush and Starstruck. Maybe something like Choke Slam, Debilitate, or Red Thunderquake, which I'll talk about a little later, could turn into like Red Disable, which is kind of disrupt like Arsenal Disruption. And uh, but yeah, as it is right now, just Spinal Crush. I want to talk a little about Test of Strength. Um, in my opinion, this card is the whole reason to play Victor. This is Victor's Codex of Frailty. This card is absolutely insane in Victor. It's a four card block. It says when it defends, clash with the attacking hero, and the winner creates a gold. So what that's going to look like is you're going to block four, you're going to win the clash, you're going to create a gold, and then you're going to draw the card that you revealed off the clash. So you get four value from blocking, you get three value from the card you drew, and you get whatever value the gold represents. I think the gold represents three value, and we'll talk about that in a couple cards. But it might only represent like two value if you just like turn Anothos into a one card six off the gold. But Test of Strength is literally the only way we can create gold like in a reasonable way in our deck. Um, and we can only create three gold off it because we can only play three of them, right? And in a card we'll talk about in a second, I'll tell you why I think they're all worth three. I'm running Red Thunderquake. Just getting a little bit of uh, old him flashbacks here. <clears throat> he ran Glacial, and sometimes he even ran Glacial and Thunderquake. And it was just good for like a fatigue sort of plan. Ten damage is just a lot. Like, fatiguing them through damage is possible, and 10 damage is just going to get 3 cards. Um, I run Zealous Belting. I think this is a necessary evil against something like Dromai, maybe even something like Prism. Um, and it's good in the mirror. Um, maybe, yeah, it's probably good in the Victor mirror, probably good against Bravo, probably good against uh, all the Guardians, so still including that. The Golden Sun. So this is the card why I think gold is worth 3. Um, this is also another way to create a gold token, but we don't have a ton of clash in our deck. We have test of strength and then a sideboard card I'll show later. But with the three test of strengths, it turns our three golden suns into a 10 overpower for four resources. Off a of surge, this can just be a two card 10, which is just like a ton of value. Um, we even get the, we even get overpower keyword from our gold. So our gold is worth like three and a little bit of evasion. So I definitely just try to make three gold and use them on the Golden Sun to turn it into like a four cost Red Thunderquake. Um, I think this card is, it's like okay. It's not like insane, but I think it is quite good. And two card 10 value is like really good. Another reason why you might want to play Tunic is you don't have to set up the Surge to make it a two card 10. You can just like wait for it to be a two card 10. And notably, it also pitches for two, so it's like um, drawing it off a of gold if you're trying to do a two-card Anothos, or a one-card for six Anothos. If you draw the yellow, you can still swing the Anothos. Uh, it doesn't come up a ton, but it it can come up. The blue base, blue base is fairly normal. Um, we play all the poppers, which is seven cards, 21 poppers. We play Terra Sunder, Unmovable, and Rouse the Ancients as our Clash Misses. But we play uh, Blue Boulder Drop and Blue Cart Cartilage Crush as well, um, just to up the amount of attacks in our in our main deck here, so that we can try to 
win as many clashes as possible. And even the fives are pretty good. Like against aggro decks, you can lose by revealing a five, but you can you're gonna win a lot more. Like they have to reveal like ninja has to reveal like surging strike or e strike or um, ravenous rabble or c and c. They can't just reveal like whelming gust wave or head jab or something. You're still gonna win off these fives. Um, and yeah. That's 69 cards, so we side out 9 cards into matchups, and um, interestingly enough, we do side out Test of Strength against, like, KO, for instance, because KO, his whole deck is 6s, and for us to win a Clash, we have to reveal, we only have, like, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9... We only have like 27 hits, and I don't want to be giving them a gold more often than we get a gold, and 27 hits, 33 misses, um, just tilts it in their favor a little bit too much. I do run it against Reinar because their whole blue base is like misses. They don't have the KO text where their fives become sixes. Um, so we do side this out sometimes. Um, usually when we're siding out Test of Strength, we're siding in Zealous Belting. Um, and kind of going a different plan, just kind of trying to do an out value plan. So our sideboard is three Arcane Barrier. We have Titan Twist and Steel Blade Buckler, but we also have this new hammer, Miller's Grindstone. I think this is the hammer they want um, Victor to use because it has the clash. So it costs three, it hits for four. When it hits a hero, you clash with them. If you win, destroy the top card of their deck. And if they win, you put a minus one counter on this. So using this just like against decks that could possibly win clashes seems pretty loose to me. Like I don't think you could play this against like Azuri and try to fatigue them. I just think this thing becoming three, two, one or whatever is gonna be pretty detrimental to your plan. But it, I think it is worth a sideboard slot because notably against Warrior it's very good because Warrior just doesn't play a lot of attacks or at least currently um, all their current iterations over the last couple years haven't played very many attacks. Maybe they have like three C and C. Um, we see the new Kasai has like three Nourishing Emptiness and if they have 57 misses and three hits and then we can even beat their hits a non-zero amount of the time with our sevens and eights, um, I think this is going to be very good. Especially when you consider that those matchups can be really grindy and sort of fatiguey. Um, a lot of warriors have been going like Decimator Great Axe into Guardian. And while those lists can play a little bit more attacks, like they can play like C and C and Fiendel's Fighting Spirit and like E Strike, I think this will still be very good. And um, it also lets you clash, so you can do some pretty scary stuff with this, like. Imagine you just have one blue and you swing in with Miller's Grindstone and they just block three and take one and you like reveal the Golden Sun off the top. You get to make a gold, draw Golden Sun and put it in Arsenal with the gold already ready to go for uh, to pay into its plus three and overpower. That just seems like a very, um, very strong line, right? Like it turns your hammer into snatch, make a gold and that's... Uh, that's very good. Like, I don't think I got to explain that too, too deeply. That's just like, um, even to a new player, you would see that as just like pure value. So this is like, I was going to say this is the first iteration of Victor for me, but really this is like the sixth or seventh iteration of Victor for me. I've been very excited about Victor and I've been, uh, building decks for him ever since he was released last Saturday. And recently he sort of works on Talishar, so I got to record a game so I could record this video for you guys. So why don't we just get right into the game and see how that goes. In this matchup I'm playing against Kasai, which is super cool because that means I get to play the new uh, Miller Grindstone Hammer. And I believe I just play all 69 of my cards because I am looking to 
sort of outlast them. Um, one card I could think about siding out is Zealous Belting because it blocks very poorly against the Centauri Sabers. And um, it also sort of forces me into saving three card hands when I draw it because I really want to fatigue with damage with it. And also our hammer doesn't hit for six, so it re reduces the power of Zealous Belting quite a bit. And they have Valiant Dynamo, so the hammer is very easy for them to block. But it is a hammer that they just have to continually block, 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 block. Um, so I think probably siding out with Zealous Belting is reasonable here. Uh, definitely want all the D-Reacts. Definitely want Test of Strength. But I do believe I just keep all 69, including the Zealous Beltings. First turn of the game, of course, we're just trying to not take any damage. So we're just going to block out. Hope, hope, hopefully being able to keep this Spinal Crush to throw at them during our turn. So we only block 6, but they get a little damage through with a offensive attack react. We draw 2 blues, so we get to make a surge, throw a Spinal Crush, and Arsenal our Sink below, which is good. We see them give us a bunch of armor. Just a little early for that. They play a this rounds on me. Kind of interesting. Um, yeah, I think we just want to stop damage this turn. Uh, we could like take a bunch of damage. They played a what is this called? Slice and dice, which gives first attack plus one, second attack plus three because it's red. So if they didn't do anything else, which they probably will because they have to give it go again, but if they didn't do anything else, we'd be taking 3 plus 5 just to, like, tear asunder a Cranial Crush, which I don't think is worth it. So we're probably just going to block here, throwing a tear asunder in front. Yeah, and they give us a red Blade Runner. So there's... Oh, and they have a hit and run. So their second swing is, like, huge here. It's 11, but it's going to be 12 if we block with an attack, which is going to happen. I think I just blocked 12 with all four cards in my hand. We noticed we started with more cards in our deck than they did, so, and we're going to have the hammer endgame while I think they will eventually run out, run out of go again, maybe. I think their deck plays a ton of go again though, so it's probably pretty hard to for them to run out of go again. I just blocked with Golden Sun here. I think I probably should have blocked with uh, a blue though, and just saved Golden Sun for later, so that I could have used it with the gold I'm going to generate off Test of Strength. Although generating gold off Test of Strength is not 100%. And I think here I can just take five. Um, saving the D-React for an attack where they like generate a gold or a copper on hit is a lot better than just using it to save some life. Um, if they get too many gold and play their ally generating card, that's like you can make a 3-2 go again dude with each gold you sacrifice. If they ever get to do like three of those, uh, it's pretty bad for you. Oh, we win the Clash. So yeah, we just go Zealous Belting into Hammer. They don't block it, so we win the Clash and fatigue them a card. Not bad. Ooh, we have a Surge and a Red Choke Slam up, so that's going to be fun. They play a Cash in, though, so we might just have to end up blocking with our hand. They play a card that makes a Copper, so probably going to use my React here. Also don't want them generating a bunch of Copper, because then Blood on their hands becomes scary. They just double Blade Runner us. That seems a little aggressive. They might have wanted to save one of those for Arsenal. Since this game's going to go long, they probably want each Blade Runner to um, be like a second sword swing instead of just like a pump spell. 
And yeah, they used Kasai, so if this hits, they make a gold. So I'm just going to end up blocking with all of my cards that can block and leaving the Sigil for Arsenal. Uh, they had it in the swing, so they do get a gold here. We draw an ugly hand here, but hopefully Test of Strength wins the Clash, revealing a blue. And I think for that reason, so they played a high striker. So if this attack hits, they make like six copper. We cannot let that happen. Um, oh, and he also did hit and run. So this does have go again. So maybe we can block with an attack. If he didn't have hit and run, like if he didn't have face up go again here, I'd be tempted to just block with test of strength in case they don't have the go again attack or go again ability but because we know it has go again we're just gonna save the test of strength for this one here Ooh, and we win the clash so it's not coded properly on Talishar yet that's why every time you see me win a clash and make a gold I go into manual mode and just manually draw the card um, but still close enough. And it is the blue, so pretty lucky here. I think I make a surge, throw command and conquer, play sigil, and then arsenal the choke slam with the surge up. The only other line is just throw choke slam by pitching like four, but I don't think that's quite as good. Uh, CNC threatens our arsenal. And we get to have a surge for a more efficient choke slam turn next turn. I love how even the different like it's a different hero. It's still just like guardian lines. Like you don't have to like reinvent the wheel, so to speak. Like we already know this sort of math. We already know surge math. We know uh, Command and Conquer is a great attack with tech plating because it's one of the only ones that gives you a seismic surge you can float. We know a four for uh, an attack that costs four resources is very good off a tunic and a surge. So we get to just sort of experiment with a little bit more see like different seasoning, right? It's not a whole completely different meal. They activate Kasai to make a gold uh, if their saber hits. They attack for two, we block for three, it goes up to three. They give it go again and they pump it. And I definitely think I'm just going to use the fate for scene here to prevent the gold, the gold uh, production. I see a red debilitate on top, but I think I just want to put it on bottom. Have a little bit of a better threat late game. And I already have the red choke slime in Arsenal. But it, you see me going for armor here, and I think that's okay. One, he might have a pump spell that re needs reprise, like Iron Song Response. I see that sometimes out of Kasai. I've only played Kasai maybe like 10 times, but uh, sometimes they have Iron Song Response. But mainly I have like this red Thunderquake I don't want to block with. I want to fatigue through damage. We're already pretty far ahead on the fatigue uh, rate. I mean, I guess we both have 19 cards in our graveyard slash banish, but I have five more cards in my deck and I kind of want to press that. I also want to use this Surge to throw my Choke Slam and Arsenal my Thunderquake. So that's why I use armor here. I think it might be a little bit um, aggressive use of armor but hopefully it will prevent a gold, which it does, and then we still get to um, throw some attacks here. Really trying to um, either get some cards, get some life, and get our big uh, Thunderquake in, the, in our arsenal. To use Outland Skirmish, red, so their first attack will get plus three, and then they use Kasai ability, so if it hits, they get a gold. 
Um, we don't even draw two blues to throw our Thunderquake, so we're just planning to block here. They have Centaur they have a pump spell in Stroke of Foresight, so unfortunately they do get a copper and a gold. But we get to keep um, two cards to make a surge and throw a command and conquer here. The Surge isn't going to really help us with the Thunderquake, but the Surge with Thunderquake will allow us to continue floating that Surge, which will be pretty important for, uh, uh, like, Choke Slam and Debilitate. I've already blocked with two of my Golden Suns, which is kind of annoying, because I'd really like to throw those off of... I'd really like to throw those and use my gold for that specifically. But perhaps we can use our gold to win more Mill Clashes in the future if we have to block with all of our Golden Suns. They throw a Nourishing Emptiness at us, and I'm definitely going to block this with Armor. So, I think I want Rouse and Arsenal. So I'm going to block with probably Buckling Blow, Buckling Blow, and then like Tech Plating and Steel Blade, Steel Blade Buckler, pitching both Choke Slams to make a Surge and play the Thunderquake in our Arsenal. Not blocking with the Crater Fist, just in case we ever want to activate it. I think I probably activate Crater Fist less than any other player in the history of the game. Um, I've played with the Crater Fist like thousands of games, and I've probably activated it like five times. I know a player like Kale McCreeth activates Crater Fist probably the most out of any player. Um, and that probably means more of us should probably be activating it to give plus two because uh, he's just like the best Bravo player. This hand's kind of cool. Um, Thunderquake plus Zealous Belting activate Rouse. So we can pitch Unmovable playing Rouse, revealing these two, and then pitch Thunderquake, hitting with Miller's Grindstone, arsenaling our Zealous, or playing Sigil Solace to gain three and arsenal Zealous Belting. We just have to make sure that what he's doing right now is only throwing damage and not like creating um, any sort of like coins for our opponent. But it looks like he is creating some coinage. He uses blood in our hands to give a weapon plus, to give both of the weapons plus one. Why is it four? Was there like a courage token or something? Oh, maybe they gave the same weapon plus one twice. And if it hits, make a gold. I think I'm just going to let it hit and give him a gold. It kind of sucks, but it is what it is. And then this one, yeah, is two plus one from the Blade Runner. So they gave one of their sabers plus one twice. And then we're going to do that Rouse line that we talked about. I would say we still kind of have the armor advantage, but they have Dynamo. So depending on how long the game goes, Dynamo is just out armor advantaging every deck. But we still have a bunch of armor. We have like three block out of our Civic three, four, five, six, seven total. And they have like two with their dynamo and their courage, although the dynamo is going to be a lot more than one as we see it remove its counter time and time again. Uh, this hand's a little annoying. Both of our blues can't turn on Zealous Belting. They are attacks, but there are five power attacks. Um, but it looks like we are going to try to stop this gold generation. Just gonna fate for seeing this. Um, one gold is generally okay for Kasai to have, but if they start stacking them and making more than one ally, it really sucks. If they use their card to just make one ally from one gold, like that's perfectly fine. It's almost like a head jab at that point. It's almost like a just like a dragon at that point because you just attack it with your hammer and move on. But if they make like three, and you have to like attack one with your hammer, and then next turn they get to attack with two, and then the next turn you attack another one with your hammer, and then they do to attack with one, it's just way too much value that piles up over time. 
uh, really hard to deal with. Maybe that's one reason to have Zealous Belting in this matchup, is just so on the off chance you need to kill like two allies in a turn, uh, you have a way in your deck to accomplish that. When I Fate for Scene opted, it looks like I kept Blue Disable on top just to turn on my Zealous Belting in Arsenal, which is something I wouldn't always do, but it looks like it was something I did here. Whoa, what am I doing? Oh, I think I know what I want to do. I want to block with armor on the first one. Um, and then on the second one, block with two cards so I can still Zealous Belting them. Because they played a slice and dice, so this is going to be worth three. I want to block with armor because if I block with the card, it goes up. And then their second one's going to be worth five, and if I block with two cards, uh, that'll be blocking six. Getting some Civic Steps use here because uh, presumably their next attack they will want to use will not... Um, if it has go again, it won't really benefit them in any way. It is one more power than I was anticipating though, so we are going to give them a Crater Fist to prevent that gold production. playing our Zealous Belting line. They are getting pretty low on cards. They have 27. We're going to have 34. Um, it is really easy for them to stop the hammer with Valiant Dynamo, um, but even when they block it, it sort of mills them a card, right? The card they blocked with. This is a little bit of an ugly hand, but that's okay. We have a Fate for Scene and a Sync Below. Hopefully we can Fate for Scene the first attack, Sync Below the second attack, and sink the zealous belting hopefully fate for scene sees a blue on top and then we can sink below the zealous belting into the blue we do not see a blue so we put it at bot on bottom and we get to try again i'm still just going to blind sink here uh, our hand doesn't do anything unless we hit a blue here so we just kind of got to try not sure why i sunk debilitate there Sinking Debilitate there seems very loose. I think I'm supposed to sink Zealous Belting so that if I draw blue I can throw Debilitate off the Surge. That just seems like a mistake. Um, I guess having Zealous Belting in Arsenal is kinda nice, but it's not really that big a deal. Ooh, we draw our third and final Golden Sun with the gold we have. We could sell us belting into Golden Sun off our two blues, which would be kind of nice. Hopefully, uh, we can just take some damage here. We have enough life to take damage for sure, but we don't want them like stacking gold. Um, even though it might be worth it here to let them get like a second gold, because they're at 10 and uh, we're going to be sending back 15 and then arsenaling a Thunderquake. We can definitely let them get a little copper here, I think. Ooh, they're getting a bunch of copper here. Ooh, and they, they, they crack their gold so that their swords are free. And it looks like I just want to prevent them from having a big turn, which is not as fun, but it is probably just fine. They used their gold last turn, so they have to just, like, pitch into their cash-in. Civic Steps and Test of Strength. Well, we reveal our last Test of Strength. Unfortunate. But it's not like we have any Golden Suns left in our deck to use our gold for, so not really the biggest deal. We cannot easily block this, so they just kind of get to get this. And then we're going to have another Zell Spelting turn. 
And we know they have blood in, on her hands in their hand, so letting them make that copper does kind of suck, but it is what it is. We couldn't have blocked it. And I think sending a little aggression here is better. Maybe sending aggression on the turn before and just letting them have a ton of copper would have been better too. Because we would have been able to send 15. In this turn we're only sending 9. But they're running out of cards in deck. And we just aren't. So I think this game is going to be pretty difficult for them to get 20. Uh, get us for 20 life off of like their last 14 cards. They finally popped their courage with their blood on their hands and they chose go again and second attack. Just gonna block this one with an attack, looking to block the second one with test of strength plus sink below. If they have like a pump spell. Oh, it already has go again, so it won't even be pumped. I was expecting like a Blade Runner. But yeah, we're just going to block with Test of Strength. We win the Clash, so we get to draw a card. As you see, uh, block four, draw a card is pretty nuts. Like, I think Test of Strength alone makes... Test of Strength plus, like non-specialized guardian cards I think is already like a good deck. They give it go again. Oh, so what do they have? Nourishing Emptiness here? That's pretty cute. Luckily we have Sink Below plus Crown of Providence. And we can just stop this. We could sink the Sigil of Solace, but we just don't need to. And the Sigil and Arsenal is good enough. If we drew another blue though, we could just use that to swing hammer and then arsenal rouse the ancients. So I think both plays are fine, but I'm just going to keep the sigil. And they just scoop. Um, with only their 11 cards left, they probably were thinking they're not going to be able to get 20. They're probably out of all their big pump spells, so we could probably just like block three and then block three, or block three and then block six, and then just like hammer for four, turn after turn after turn. And maybe they did, they're like running out of go again too. But yeah, either way, they they were done with this game. Um, <clears throat> hopefully this game showcased a little bit of the power of Victor. I never got to sack a gold in the Golden Sun to show you that like big like a red thunderquake for one blue and one surge, which is uh, pretty dang good value. But you did get to see Test of Strength draw a card twice, and maybe that opened your eyes to just how powerful that is. It's very simple. Like, it's not, it's not as flashy as a codex. Like, it doesn't make your opponent discard a card. It doesn't put, like, counters into play. Um, and it doesn't let you, like, choose an attack from your graveyard to put into your, to your arsenal. So it's not quite as good as Codex of Frailty, but when you count the value, it's just like almost there. Um, and even more annoyingly, it's not like an offensive card like Codex, it's a defensive card. And most people just hate playing against decks that block well. Like with that card, you could just like block four, three, 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 three. You could block, you know, 16 off of a normal four card hand. And, uh, that's just sort of gross. So hopefully we get some more cool cards for Victor. I'm very excited for this deck. I think he's going to be quite good. Um, he might struggle with stuff like Mechanologist because blocking well against Mechanologist is just not how you win. He might have to do. He might have to have some sneaky sort of tech. He might have to play something like Smashing Good Time so that he can make his Golden Sun like 13 overpower or destroy your induction chamber or whatever. Um, and yeah, I'm very excited to get started on this hero. Maybe even play him in LA if he's good enough. Um, yeah, definitely uh, sorry that maybe we'll be seeing more Victor on this channel than Bravo in the upcoming months. But also not sorry because Victor is awesome. And I think a lot of Bravo players, if they came to Bravo after old him rotated should maybe take a look at Victor. It might fit a little bit more of that old him play style you're used to. 
and um, who doesn't like drawing cards? So thanks for stopping by. I, if you made it this far, thank you so much. I appreciate each and every one of your views. It means a lot to me. It gets me uh, to make these videos, really. Uh, it really motivates me to do this. So I hope you all have a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time.